Imagine this. A hyperactive red-headed bird enters a turf war with a big city lawyer wanting to tear down his home. I am today's host, Nathan, and I'll be explaining 2017's Woody Woodpecker. The movie starts with the scene of a green and lush forest. Then the camera zooms inside the tree Woody Woodpecker calls home. We hear some snoring as we are taken through the house. There are wooden books on the shelf. We also see a family portrait and a baseball mitt being used as a bird-sized sofa. Then suddenly, there is a noise outside, and Woody is startled awake. He calls the viewer's attention as he speeds off to check it out. There are two bird poachers with tranquilizer dark guns roaming the forest. Their names are Otis and Nate, they are brothers. As they walk around the forest looking for any exotic animal to capture for money, Woody makes itself known as it recognizes them. They see it too atop the tree, and Woody dares them to shoot at it. They let off a dart or two but miss. So Woody gets between them, and in the confusion of the moment, Otis and Nate shoot at Woody, but it avoids the darts, which end up on both brothers. Police. It's all in a day's job for Woody, who is determined to protect its home and habitat. Later on, the brothers search for Woody on the internet and realize that it's a rare bird called a pileated red-crowned woodpecker that goes for a fortune on the black market. Lance, a lawyer, gets fired from his high-profile job for making a bad comment about wildlife conservation. And you're gonna fire me. So he decides to use his landed inheritance to get some sustenance. It's a piece of land his grandfather gave him, and so he plans to travel there with his girlfriend, Vanessa. As they prepare to leave, his ex-wife Linda shows up with their son. May we come in? Of course. She wants Lance to watch over Tommy while she travels over to see her sick father. Lance and Vanessa are reluctant to take on Tommy, but they have no choice. So they all get on the road and soon arrive at the property in the woods near a lake. I cannot wait to get a bulldozer in here and start building. It is also a woodpecker's general habitat. A ranger soon arrives, and her Sam name is Sam. Park ranger in charge of the state land. She says she knew Lance's grandpa when she was little. She also warns of poachers lurking about. She eventually leaves. And Tommy also decides to go for a walk in the surrounding woods rather than help his father. Tommy gets to a random sitting area and is listening to some music on his phone speakers as he drums the beat. He also has a snack the woodpecker just so happens to like. So it shows itself, and Tommy is surprised with seeing it for the first time. It wants a bit of Tommy's snack as it zips and zaps about. Tommy gives it one or two morsels before it goes away. Soon, Tommy is at an outdoor dinner with his dad and Vanessa. Then appears Woody Woodpecker. His dad and Vanessa have never seen it before and are alarmed by it. They try to shoo it away, but it ends up ruining the set table. That night while everyone is asleep, it makes noises so much that Lance wakes up and goes outside to confront it. He throws his shoe at it, but Woody catches it like a baseball and tosses it right back. It hits Lance square in the face, and he is frustrated. The next day, work begins in earnest on Lance's house project. All the equipment and men are there. And the noise of construction wakes Woody from his sleep. He does not like this and so resolves to do something about it. Woody starts to disrupt the construction and chase everyone away. The men scamper about. Habitat of a very territorial bird. That night, it appears outside Lance's RV again while making annoying noises. When Lance gets outside to confront it, it locks Lance out of his RV. The work must go on during the next day. Woody Woodpecker appears yet again to disrupt things. <laughs> this time it goes after Lance and Vanessa as they supervise the work. They both run for their car on its approach. Woody gets the idea to pour some cement through the car ceiling window while they are still locked in. It will eventually take the foreman's intervention to open the car door and let them out all soaked in wet cement. Lance goes over to Sam's office to report the incident with Woody. That's the flying demon right there. Sam suggests they try to get on its good side, but Lance is desperate and leaves. Tommy goes into town and finds a music shop. He picks up a guitar there and starts to play a little. A girl there named Jill tries to talk to him. Her parents own the shop, and she wants Tommy to join her band so they can play at an event later on. You need a guitarist. Yeah. So Tommy agrees to this and leaves with the guitar in a bag. 
Just then, two boys try to bully him, but Woody comes to his rescue and rips the boys' clothes as they run off. Nobody messes with my BFF. Later on, Tommy practices with the band. Jill is there as well as Lyle. Woody appears and lays down some drum beats as they play. It seems it has some serious skills. Back in the woods, Vanessa has had enough of the troubles from Woody and has decided to leave for home. I think I just did that guy a huge favor. So Lance is all by himself now with his son Tommy to keep him company. They spend the night together, sleeping out in the open. By the way, the RV has been towed away, so they have no other option out here than to complete the house. Father and son talk a little before calling it a night. The next day, Lance enlists the help of Nate and Otis to help catch and release Woody. They are talking privately in the corner at a food establishment, and the brothers agree to help Lance with his bird problem. We will see you in the manana. Also, Tommy and his friends Jill and Lyle just so happen to be walking in the woods as they head for the stream when they discover a shed belonging to the brothers. It is filled with dead animals that have been stuffed. Next, it's back at the construction site, and the brothers show Lance their setup. Once he is within range, they have rigged a little cage to drop on Woody. They also have heat-seeking darts of all things and a net gun with the net electrified. And to top it off, they have a double whammy lure of peanut butter which Woody can't resist and a female woodpecker decoy. So they lay in wait away from view, and Woody soon appears after catching the scent of peanut butter. He draws near to the spot, but it seems it has figured its captors out. As the cage drops, it steps to the side and avoids it. Then the heat-seeking darts are shot and are on its tail, but it maneuvers in such a way that the darts end up on the poaching brothers. Then it attacks Lance with the electrified net gun. Lance later meets Sam in town while buying some supplies. She suggests that he try to appease Woody rather than fight it. So he gets back and tries out her advice. He offers Woody a peanut snack, and Woody falls for it. He offers Woody a peanut-based snack, and Woody falls for it on the first try. Afterwards, Lance keeps the snacks coming, so Woody becomes friendlier and allows Lance to finish his house. The time for the Firefly Festival comes around. This is the event Tommy and the band have been practicing for. It's a cheerful atmosphere, and everyone is having a good time. Lance even invites Sam to come and watch Tommy play his guitar. Meanwhile, Lyle, who is supposed to be the drummer in their band, has an upset stomach from the hot dog eating contest. But my stomach's got other plans. So they have to play without him. When it gets to their turn, they start strumming without their drummer. Then Woody appears to the rescue. He sets up an improvised drum set backstage and supports the music with his mad skills. Afterwards, Lance congratulates Tommy for such a good showing of his guitar skills. Tommy has the mind to thank Woody too, for helping out in a time of need. In the midst of all of this, Woody gets an idea. He flies over to the newly constructed house and proceeds to artfully carve out a mural of itself, Lance and Tommy above the mantelpiece. Woody then steps back to appreciate its artwork. It likes what it sees and decides to sign it in the bottom right corner like every artist would. Its chiseling beak strikes an electrical outlet in the process, and a fire is started. It soon engulfs the house, and Woody is sorry for the mistake but flies out of there. By the next morning, the house had been razed, and the firefighter are combing the debris to determine the cause of the fire. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to. They figure it started from an electrical outlet tampered with by some small animal. Lance puts two and two together, and the evidence seems to point to Woody. Lance is angry and immediately calls Otis and Nate. While on the site, they pull down Woody's tree. Then, the brothers tase Woody and carry it away captive in a cage. Tommy doesn't like that Woody is being taken away by the brothers because he has been to their secret shed out in the woods and knows what they do to animals. He expresses his concerns to his father, but the brothers lie and defend their intentions. You were the first friend I ever had. They take Woody to their shed and initiate an online bidding process for it. Meanwhile, Tommy has enlisted the help of Jill and Lyle, his bandmates, to help rescue Woody. They get to the shed and sneak in, but it's not long before the brothers apprehend them. Lance is going through the rubble of his burnt-down house again when he discovers what Woody was truly up to. He finds the carved mural and realizes Woody didn't burn down the house on purpose. So he heads into town and finds Sam. 
Together, they move to locate Tommy. Tommy and his friends are locked in a cage, and the brothers conclude the bid at the $900,000 mark. They celebrate and then proceed to permanently tranquilize Woody for further taxidermy. Nate orders Otis to start packing up their stuff into the truck because of this payday. They can afford to retire and never be seen again. They are soon interrupted when Sam and Lance arrive and start asking questions. The brothers easily deflect the questions, but Sam and Lance press for answers and even catch the brothers red-handed. But Sam and Lance are overpowered and locked up too. And when the brothers are about to proceed with permanently sedating Woody, Lance sees an opportunity to set it free. He topples his cage, opens Woody's cage's top lid, and lets it out. Woody goes on to knock out Otis and Nate just as the cop cars arrive. But both brothers recover and get on the four-wheeler machine and ride towards the Canadian border. Woody intercepts them just before the border crossing. And they figure they can take him on as the full-grown men they are versus a bird. The brothers pull out a knife, and Woody acts scared and runs away. But it has gone underneath the wooden bridge and starts to peck a circle around where the brothers are standing. So the brothers fall through the bridge into the river. They swim to shore, where the police officers and Sam are waiting. Lance reconciles with Woody, and as a gesture of peace, it presents it with a new bird house. He also shows the designs for a new house to Sam and Tommy. Woody is happy with his new home, and all is well. That night, Lance hears annoying woodpecker sounds coming from Woody, but this time he can tolerate it. Woody is carving the wooden pole that holds up its birdhouse. But he does it a little bit too much, and the pole loses its stability and falls over the tent where Lance and Tommy are sleeping. Lance wakes up annoyed at Woody as it skedaddles out of there. Thank you for watching. Check out these other videos from Imagine This, and make sure to subscribe and tap the bell to be notified about our latest videos. See you next time.